everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. Welcome into this Premiere Pro tutorial. Uh, I don't really have a preview to show you today because we're going to be talking about a technique, and it's an amazing technique. It is the global power, and global within the context of working in Premiere Pro, not worldwide, uh, the global power of master clip effects. They're really amazing. We're going to try to burn through it pretty quickly here. So if it's something you're just not interested in, well, you won't have wasted much time. And if it's something you love, well, hey, all the more power to you. You're going to love it. Uh, if you do enjoy this tutorial, speaking of loving, it, make sure you subscribe to the channel using that red button down below so you never miss another Premiere Pro video editing or really any video tutorial that I do in the future. And if you really love it, well, we'll keep this short and sweet. There's a link that appeared up there. It's my Photoshop course. You can pick up a copy of that. There's also a link in the bio of this video. It's the best way to support this channel, and this channel is funded by viewers just like you. So if you pick up a copy of it, thank you very much. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. So here we are, we're in uh, Premiere Pro, and you can see here I've got this kind of mishmash of all of these clips, and all of these clips come from just four clips over here in our project bin. I know it looks like five, but this first one is just the sequence which we're working on. You can know that by the little sequence icon there in the bottom right corner of it. Uh, but all these come from these clips. If you don't know how to edit uh, using three-point editing, I have a video on it. It's called like the fastest way to edit video in Premiere. I'll try to link it up in the top corner of this video if I can remember, uh, but it's a really amazing way to edit super fast in Premiere Pro. Uh, but the premise is that you have these masks master clips in your project bin and you simply set in and out points and you choose which bit of the uh, of the actual master clip you place. So we sent this off to the client uh, hypothetically or theoretically I should say uh, and they say look we love everything except these shots of Petco Park and the beautiful sweeping view of downtown San Diego, California. We really want these shots to be warmed up, maybe pump the contrast a little bit more something like that, maybe darken the highlights a little bit, see if we can recover what we can recover up there in the sky. Hey, no problem problem, except for the fact that we look at our, our job and we've got, th in this case, only three clips, but let's say you have 300 clips. Well, if you've sort of parceled and pieced them all out from one big master clip, like our shot of Petco Park, it's very, very easy to do this. No need to select in every individual clip. No need to use adjustment layers. If you select the clip, and there's a number of ways to get to what we're about to do, you can hit the letter F, which is match frame, which brings you to that exact frame in the source clip, in the source monitor. You can see the playhead is lined up right there. There's an in and an out point, which is the in and out of this, this specific clip on the timeline, and the playhead is right exactly within that in and out point where the playhead is in our uh, on our timeline down here. Same thing would happen down here if I select this hit F, you can see the in and out point changes to reflect the clip and the playhead moves exactly to where I am here in the document. There's a number of reasons that match clip is, uh, or match frame, excuse me, is so useful and so helpful. In this case, it's just a matter of loading up the clip here in our source monitor. You can also do this, by the way, just simply by double clicking a clip here in the project bin. So I can double click Petco Park, voila, there we are. And if we come over here to the effect controls, well, we can select, in fact, it is selected now, this master option. See, normally, when you select a clip in your timeline, you get this, right, where you have your motion and your opacity and all the stuff that we're accustomed to seeing here in the effect controls panel. But to the left of that, in this sort of hidden tab, there is this option to go master. And I can see the same in and out point where my playhead is and everything to do with this particular clip that's been cut from our master clip over here. These clips are kind of, think of them as child clips, right? They're children of the parent clip here that's living in the project panel. So why all this song and dance about this parent clip? Well, because I think it's really going to help us conceptualize how this works. If we come over here to master and the client wants us to be warmed up, contrast, all that good stuff, let's come down here to effects. Let's close up keying, oh, not image control, let's close up keying. Let's come over here to color correction and we can just drag a Lumetri color and drop it. We don't want to drop it on the clip out here. We want to drop it here in our effect controls under master. So I can go Lumetri color, boom. And now when I do this, let's just drop down basic correction. Let's just boost that temperature a little bit, uh, boost the contrast a little bit, something like that and uh, reduce the whites, right? Which we said we're gonna try to recover some of those highlights and maybe boost the exposure 0.2 or something like that, right? So we've changed this clip right here, but automatically we've changed every other clip that's, that, that's cut from this master clip here in our project bin. And it would be the same same thing if we were to take this, right, and we were to say, uh, let's, you know, let's, or we, let's say we drag the whole thing out, right? We drag the whole thing out and drop it in place. It's just dragging the in and out point. So I'll select this. I will go marker and choose to clear the in and out. And then I'm going to delete the little clip I dragged out. Let's say we drag the whole clip out. 
the entire clip is changed. So any and any other time we use this clip here in in this Premiere Pro document, it's going to have this same uh, color effect, this Lumetri color correction, if you will, or color grading really applied to that clip or any little piece of it that we decide to place on our timeline. But then the client comes back and says, no, we actually hate it. Well, it's really no skin off our back. We can go back to master. We can select Lumetri color, hit the delete or the backspace key, get rid of it. And they say, you know, we really want black and white instead. Well, we, maybe we should have kept Lumetri color, but I'm just going to go image control and drag a simple black to white in place, black and white there, black and white on this instance, black and white on that instance. So really, really cool stuff that you can do when you get into messing around with master clip effects. One thing I also do want to point out, if you look really closely, the little FX icon in your timeline will get a little red line beneath it. That indicates that there is a master uh, clip effect applied to that, uh, that particular clip. Uh, so you can see all of our little black and white clips, they have that little red line applied to them, which is just letting us know that any kind of color change and edit is coming not just as something we applied to that specific instance of a clip, but to the master parent clip itself. Let's try something else. Check this out. We can create an adjustment layer as well. Let's create the adjustment layer and we can apply effects to an adjustment layer as sort of a bundle of effects that we apply and are able to drag and drop anywhere on our video that we like. So I can double click on my adjustment layer. It opens it in the source monitor. It's totally black. Fine. I can come over to effect controls. You see, we got our master master thing happening here. Let's go to effects and let's come down here to color correction and apply a color balance HSL to this, uh, to this little adjustment layer here. And let's just, I don't know, have a little bit of fun. We'll shift the hue a bit. We'll brighten things up a little bit and we'll drop saturation a little something like that and really we could come in and do anything else we wanted you could you know throw some noise or some blurring or whatever you want onto this the point is now let's say I come over here to this country road shot I could drag this adjustment layer out stretch it across the country road shot and you can see that I get that effect right there and sure enough my adjustment layer as well shows that little red line indicating that these effects they're not applied right here to this instance of the adjustment layer on the timeline but rather they are master effects that live and travel with that adjustment layer so if I drag another copy of the adjustment layer out out here you can see I'll have applied that same exact effect over the video out there. So pretty cool, you can do that. And one other place that it can be really useful is if we do something like add a color mat and we choose okay here and we set like the brightness to 50%, so we get a perfect 50% gray, hit okay. And we'll just name this grain right off the bat because we're gonna use this as a grain layer. Now with the color mat, if we just double click it, it's gonna open up the color picker. So in this case, we wanna drag out a copy of it here into our, uh, into our timeline and maybe just drag it out wherever, select it. And if we look to effect controls up here, you can see we have our mat master grain option. So we can go under master and here I can come down to noise. I can just choose to add some noise to this and let's give it a ton of noise. So it's very noticeable. I'm going to shut off use color noise. I just want it to be monochromatic and great. Now we have our grain color mat. The problem is we can't see our video. So every time you drag this out, all you need to do is under opacity here, set the blend mode to soft light and you have some nice grain. So there you go. We, we just add grain to that clip. And if we decide, you know what, we need to actually add grain somewhere else. I could drag out another copy of this to like here and then simply select it, set the blend mode to soft light. Voila. I have the same amount of grain that I use all throughout this particular project. So basically what I'm trying to say is there's a lot you can do with this. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. It's a ton of fun to just play with it and see what you can do with different clips and different effects. It doesn't replace presets. There's still a lot you can do with presets that you can't really do with this, um, but this is really cool. There's a lot of really great things you can do in terms of locking up adjustment layers and, and color mats for grain and things like that, maybe lens flares and all kinds of cool stuff like that that you can really go ham with and uh, and really just create some really great time-saving uh packages, if you will, right there within your project in Premiere Pro. So if you guys enjoyed it again, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss anything in the future. And for master clips and the insane power of them to just update one clip and have it just disseminate broom, all throughout your sequence, guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.